Well, thank you for your patience. I'm not sure what happened with that link, but it would not let me in either. So it was a bit frustrating. I got the same message probably all of you are getting. So hopefully if uh, you're a little bit late, don't worry about it. That's uh, putting us all behind here. So welcome. We're back to session number two um, of our kindergarten venture as we go through the year. And we're always going to be meeting so that we're a little bit ahead of schedule to look at where we're at, how are things going, and um, for ideas that we can look at for rolling us forward. So in theory, by April, we should be looking at June and heaven will know to kind of where, where we're gonna be and what we're gonna be doing as far as curriculum is concerned. So to start off with, I'm gonna start with our acknowledgement. In the spirit of reconciliation, we want to acknowledge that this gathering is taking place on traditional lands across the province of Alberta, home to many diverse Indigenous, Métis and Inuit peoples. We especially acknowledge the Cree, Dene and Métis who have walked and marked these lands for generations. And we acknowledge that this land is a traditional meeting ground giving voice to its original peoples and the story of creation of this country in a way that history may have forgotten. So what we're going to be looking at today in our sort of short one hour, and I'll try not to go too far over, I want to spend a, a little bit of time having a look, and I'll look through what you've written in the chat box. It looks like you're all pretty much at the same place, and pretty much, I can say, with all the boards that I'm working with, sounds very similar to, to where we're at. Um, I want to look at September to November, um, because really, we're going to be back again in November to unpack December at the same time want to look at outcomes and concepts because a lot of you are talking about assessment right now and I want to make sure that we're not forgetting uh, of what that might look like now with this new curriculum. And then again just talking a little bit about money and how some of those pieces are should be at this point fitting into what we are doing. So again at the end of today I my goal really is that you just continue to feel that you have the sort of the upper hand and that you have the tools that you're going to need to move forward with the new curriculum. I recognize kindergarten is the one that's least affected by change, um, but there are some new things to infuse in there. And so just wanna make sure that people are feeling that they have that sense of direction and, and working towards uh, a common goal. Okay, so to start off our day, I'm not gonna go through unpacking this whole document again, because we've already done that. But I do want to take some time at looking at those three colored lines that appear in our document again for, for the reason that we're going to talk about assessment. The organizing idea, remember, was the line, the darkest line, it's always at the top. It is the one that replaced our quote strand um, topic or um, title. It's where I find the idea that I'm working on. So in this case, number is the first one that appears in our document. But moreover, that first line, the darkest line of whatever color I'm looking at, always contains the big rocks. It has the big concepts in it that regardless of whether we're all doing the same year at a glance or not, in the end, we all should be able to zero in on exactly the same big concept and, and the end of the year assessing it to the same degree. So it is an important piece that we need to not sort of brush over because we have numerous rows of cusps in it, this part is our big rock and it actually informs how all of those cusps got put together for kindergarten, grade one, grade two, and grade three. How I unpack this is going to be unique towards you. Each one of you has a unique style and our styles of teaching are going to direct how we see that particular concept get unpacked and that is just human nature. You all know that right now you could pick up a book, you could get lesson plans from me, you could, you could get the same word for word lesson plan sent to all of you. But when you pick it up, you will automatically see things that don't fit with your style and you would just tweak them. And that again is human nature. So even if you have a great partner you plan with right now, you may plan for the same thing, but the minute you close your doors, you have that unique spin on it. And this is important because it will change how we unpack some of our outcomes. Something else I just want to review is as you're reading through the pieces in your cusp, I want to reiterate some of the issues that we came across earlier in the year. And just to clarify some words, because these are important um, clarifications from Alberta Education. So let's look at one of our outcomes, 1.1, for example, quantity 
can be represented using, in your words, it's using in your curriculum. That's the only time it ever showed up, which really means including objects, pictures, words, and numbers. So anytime we encounter the word including, and I'm gonna put using into that one, anything that comes behind the word including means that we have to address those. Those aren't negotiable. We don't get to say, well, I always do words and numbers, but I don't do objects. Like that's not a big thing for me. I don't do pictures. So we have four things stated. We need to make sure that we address all four. How you do that isn't up to you. When you do, it's up to you, but that we have to address them, which means we're assessing them too. Let's go down to the bottom where it says uh, 1.4, comparisons of quantity can be described by using words such as, and then I see words like more, less, same, enough, not enough. They're typically words I would use if I was unpacking a concept, but because it appears with the word such as, if you have different terminology that you've always used over the years and it actually achieves exactly the same thing, then you're welcome to use them because such as says we have flexibility in choice. We don't have to use what's there. I would say in most cases, we'd probably use what's there, but we'd still add in maybe some own terms or own, you know, different approaches that you have. You're never throwing away best practices. In no place in this curriculum does it say get rid of. And even when you go to including at the top and it has two things or four things there, that's not to say those are the only four that we have to teach. We must teach those four, mm -hmm. but you can absolutely add mm -hmm. other things in as well. So you're not throwing away best practices in any way, shape or form. Okay, that's, that's an important piece for us to remember. The other thing is when we have a word in brackets, and in this case in kindergarten, we have them for measurement. We're not there yet, but just as an example, size can be interpreted in many ways according to measurable attributes, such as how much a container holds. When there's a word in brackets, that's a math term that we must teach the students. But capacity might be a really big word for a kindergarten student to master all the time. So when I'm actually doing the activity with them, I might hold up a cup or maybe I hold up a jar. I might say, we're gonna talk about capacity again today. Remember when we learned about capacity, it meant how much could I put into here? How much do you think this thing would hold? So you might use more lay language more often than you would use the word. And that's absolutely fine. They're saying use it at your discretion based on the age of your children. So age appropriateness, okay? The other pieces I want to remind us of are those ones that were not changed in this ministerial order. And that was the competencies, the numeracy and literacy progressions. So those are still in place. They didn't change from 2013, and we must do those. But what I want to do is, and, I, and we did visit these already in, in one of our other sessions, so I don't, I'm not going to unpack them individually, but just a reminder that there are eight of them here, and every teacher, every year, every subject, every child is shown those eight. So as kindergarten goes between September and June, somewhere in the year, I need to bring up all eight of those teach the children what they mean, but, but put it in a whatever you're working on. If you have an activity or a project or something that they're doing, then pick the, the competency that best fits that particular activity that you have for them. Now, when it comes to our outcomes, numeracy, literacy, and competencies, they've actually already been aligned. So you don't have to sort of guess which ones you think might work with this. So let me just take a quick detour here. I'm gonna go to the Learn Alberta site. I'm not gonna log in with my name for a reason for just a minute. So when I come to this site the way it is right now, this is anybody off the street, kids, parents, anybody can come and get to this page and they will have access to lots of things on this page. They also have things that they will not have access to. If, and this is just my cheat reminder to all of you, I haven't logged in with my name, but if my name was at the top and I see this hole down here at the bottom, and it doesn't say boards, then you have not yet got all access that you should have. So that's kind of your cheating way to find out whether or not you're where you should be, okay? We're gonna go into here for now. You have two places for curriculum, just a quick reminder. Up here at the top left, and that's the page that I'm gonna see here. 
And what that does is it narrows it down for my grade. I can really get specific about my grade. I don't have to have the big page that we just looked at. But if I want that big page, then you're going to go down to the bottom where it says printable curriculum. So that's the difference between the two. I'm going to stay where we're at right now. I'm going to go into mathematics. I'm going to go into kindergarten. And the minute I do that, depending on the size of the screen that you're working on right now, you might see kindergarten and grade one. You might see kindergarten, grade one, grade two. You might just see kindergarten. It adjusts according to the size of your screen. But I'm going to leave grade one up because I like to see where I'm sending students. So in here, what I see is the very first organizing idea show up as it appears in that large brown document that we looked at. The guiding question that comes right under it. And then here is the learner outcome, the first one in number that we're talking about, and children investigate quantities to 10. Now, again, I just want to remind you that when you watch my cursor, I started at the organizing idea, I come down to the guiding question. When I hit the learner outcome, notice it turned green around the outside. And that means that there's more information linked to your outcome for you already. So to find out what that is, I would go to the circle with the eye and just click it on. And now what happens is everything else goes away from my page, except that learner outcome that you said you just clicked on. So it's assuming the only thing that you want to focus on right now is children investigate quantities to 10. That's it. And that's what we want. But if you also notice that across the bottom, I got a whole new menu that came. And this menu is specific to this outcome, not the whole kindergarten program anymore, just this one outcome. So I'm not going to go into the cusps. I'm going to come back to resources. Let's go to competencies. So which one of those eight competencies, communication, problem solving, critical thinking, like which one should they or do they feel fits with children investigate quantities to 10? So when I clicked on competency, or, yeah, competency progressions, if you scroll below it, you'll see critical thinking problem solving, research, creativity, communication, personal growth. So not all eight are there. So they're saying you could choose any one of those eight to fit with this outcome. Depending on how you want to unpack it, one of those probably is going to fit well with what you want to do. You'd never do all eight. You'd never do all of those listed for that outcome. So you just really want to nail it down to which one works well. And you're going to have some that you're going to use over and over and over again because they just work well with math. Okay. Same thing will happen with the literacy and numeracy progressions. When you click those on, if you go below, you'll find for literacy, they're saying awareness, constructing meaning, communicating meaning. So they've already identified which of the literacy progressions work with that outcome as you are working with the students. So it takes away a lot of the work and the guessing. That, that we would have as to what are they thinking is a good fit. Do I have to use those? No, you don't. They're just suggestions, but it really does narrow the field for you so that you don't have to sort of second guess where I'm gonna go with it. I wanna go to resources as well. A Couple of things have changed in the last two weeks. So if you haven't been here for a while, I just wanna talk about some of those. First of all, mathology, you'll see right now that mathology has always been there, mathology little books. They no longer say information only. And that's because 10 days ago, Alberta Education purchased the license to the books. And so the mathology little books are now available for teachers online. You can't print the book, but you can put it on your smart board, you can put it on your whiteboard, you can read the whole book, you can do all the activities that you could have done with the hard copy. So it really has opened the door. You don't have to purchase mathology per se. You already have the resources for the little books. Right now, remember, I'm not logged in as a teacher. So the lay person sees this, they can read about it. They cannot access the teacher guide, any worksheets, any answer keys, like it's locked with red. If I'm a teacher with all the levels that I should have, and you're logged in right now following along with me, they should be green. If they're not green, you don't have all the rights yet to Alberta Learning. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So you have mathology little books. There are still books that say information only. And these are maybe different books. So what happens in those, you look at them, you read them, they talk about what the book is, but you'd have to buy the book or get it from a library. 
Okay, the other pieces that I want you to be aware of is gizmos. Gizmos, if you're not familiar with them, they've been around forever. Uh, we had them for years. Albert Ed had the license to for teachers free. Um, and now what happens is you can access them through here. Now, the ones that you're seeing here are really um, just what they feel fit that outcome. But there are actually a ton of gizmos housed on the uh, site that owns them. So they've only bought a license to share them with you as a teacher. Uh, this, the license, or the sorry, the company that owns them is ExploreNet Learning, and they're the ones posting it for us. So we have approached we, as in a partner and I, that are doing the science as well. We approached ExploreNet Learning and asked them, could they set up a number of sessions for teachers so that you could just meet after school one day with them and get a login and site to find your way around the explore that learning site because that's where all the gizmos are. Like you'd find the math and the science. So we have those set up. If you go to the CARC website, there's several of them that are after school. Why I want to bring that to your attention is October 26th, we have booked a night just for math science teachers in the province to go through and do a practice learning, never done it before, been there, done it before, on coding. We're hearing so many questions about, I don't even know what coding is, never heard of the word, don't know what to do with it. Kindergarten teachers, lots of them are doing coding digitally. Some of them are doing them written form. And if you don't have a clue what it is, that's fine. That's the whole purpose of that night. It's a night just for teachers. It is not designed for you to take a lesson back and teach it next day. It's about you progressing as fast as you want to go. So they have a program that will take us through the beginning steps of coding. If you're a teacher who knows how to code already and want higher level, it zooms you up already. You can go to whatever level you want to go. The only caveat is on, on the 26th, it, you need to make sure that you've already logged in and, and got your password and all that stuff through Explore Net Learning. You have to go to one of those sessions because we're not going to do that that night. We won't have time to hand out passwords and emails and all that stuff. So go to the CARC site and you will find those there. Um, Monique, you're asking, where do we find the teacher resource for mathology? So you will find those attached to these little books when it turns green. So any book that they're willing to share for lesson plans and anything will be attached to that. And usually they're in the top. Maybe I'll just go in and, and sign in myself here. Um, they're in the top right hand corner is where you'll find them. Is usually. Hi, Chris. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm looking at I always find the book, but I never find like the lesson plan. I don't know why, and I am, I'm logged in too. Okay, let me just see if I can bring it up. They may not have posted all of them either. That might be a piece that, that they left out, but let me just check here. Okay, so I'm in, by the way, you can see boards are on my menu. Uh, let's get in here. I did find some that do allow them, so I, I do know that they are available. Let me just see here. So view resource, it's usually right up here is where you'll find it. If they're accessing it, it'll be in the green is, is where the teacher plans are. So they may not have released all of them, but I have found some that, that have been done. So, okay, that's a good question though. And I'm the one that we just brought up about acorns. These books aren't new. And so there is another, uh, group that I'm working with right now, we are taking these ones, for example, these are First Nations linked ones to the math as well. We already have lesson plans written for these, but we're going to tailor them specifically to your new outcomes. And we're working on those right now. Those will be posted on the Moving Forward website. So you'll be able to access those um, and they will be full lesson plans. So you will, if you can't get them through, through Mathology, and I might have to check that one because I did find some, um, then you will have access to those. We're going to do all the First Nations ones first, and then if we have time to do the other ones, we will. So you do have some some newer resources that are being posted there for certain. That that makes a difference, and and it's a little bit more helpful. Um, and there's not a lot of other resources in there right now. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint here and just keep moving through. So what I want to talk about right now is just, again, zeroing in a little bit on 
before we look at our outcomes, um, how we're assessing on those right now and making sure that we have some tools available to us to report to parents. So we're hearing a lot of things about, well, there's only one learner outcome, but there's like five, six rows of understandings and I'm not sure how I'm gonna report that. Every board is wrestling with the same thing. So we were approached quite a while back already about can we come up with something and, and working with science at the same time, I'm able to lens both sides of what's happening in science, what's happening in math, in terminology. And so there's some things here that I'm gonna share with you that we're gonna, that you'll be able to use then possibly for reporting. If we were to look at the diagram that you're looking at your screen right now, you've got nine boxes. And I said to you, if you look at those nine boxes and I want you to look at them from the lens of quantity. So looking really at the meaning of quantity, most of you would probably zero in on what's on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Like what is the quantity that they're talking about here? I go everywhere from a question mark to 15 is the largest, that's my range in there. And that, that's a reasonable connection to the word quantity. However, if I say, take those glasses off and put on new ones that say, look at it through the lens of representation. How are children showing you how they do addition? You're really not going to be concerned with what's on here. You're more concerned with how are they representing? Are they using a number line? Are they using tally marks? Are they drawing a picture? Are they doing arrays? What are they doing? That's a representation. And again, that will inform how I might look at what a student has given me as a product and also what I'm going to be assessing. So those lenses that we wear are critical to how we're going to assess students. And in the end, we all have to be on the same page. We can't all say, I'm gonna use different lenses and I'm gonna assess differently. So how do we get to a common point, even if we're not in the same building, in the same school division, that kind of thing. So we're gonna spend some time on concepts. There's two kinds of concepts in particular that we're gonna talk about today. So first of all, let's just review what a concept is. All right, I wanna make sure that we're all on that same page. So I'm gonna find the big concept, the big rock, the overarching one is up in the organizing idea. That's where you're gonna look for it first. And we should be able to identify that doesn't matter when I get there, we should all find the same one. It will tell me what the big rock is that spans grades. What I need to know as the teacher is how do I unpack that big rock in my grade? That's the difference. So let's talk about an example. A chair is a concept. A concept generally is a noun. If you're looking for a way to quickly remind yourself what it would be, look for a noun. Um, they're usually one word or two words. If you've got a whole phrase or a sentence, then you've missed, then you've missed it, okay? That's not a concept. So one word generally, maybe two, if you're lucky. So a chair is a concept, okay? If I look at the pictures that I see, I see tons of chairs. They could be cloth covered, they could be living room chairs, they could be bar stool, like whatever, they're all chairs. I had chairs a hundred years ago. I'll have chairs hopefully a hundred years from now. Will they all look the same? No, but the purpose of a chair won't change. I sit in it. If I go to another country right now, anywhere in the world, I might not speak their language, but there'll be a word for chair. And when we say it in their language, they'll understand what it means. So it's it's universal, it's timeless. It's not specific about Alberta or Canada or North America. It's, it's timeless, it's universal. That's the definition of a concept. So that's the things that we're looking for, right? And that's kind of your, your stepping stone for if I've never looked for concepts before, what am I looking for? One or two words, two max. It's universal, it's timeless. It should be really broad. You should be saying to yourself, well, that's really big, like how am I supposed to unpack that? That's, then you're on the right boat. So let me give you an example of our chair again. If I want to talk about in global terms, the broadest sense of chairs, the broadest sense would be furniture. I walk into Leon's, I'm surrounded by bedding, um, living rooms, kitchens, you name it, it's in there, appliances. It's all furniture. I want chairs. And so the minute I start saying I want chairs, it'd be like my guiding question. I'm starting to narrow it down a little bit about where I want to focus. How do I answer that question for the guiding question? What kind am I looking at? I'm looking for chairs. What kind of furniture? I'm looking for chairs. But chairs is still a pretty big place in Leon's. I mean, there's chairs in a living room, there's chairs in a kitchen, there's chairs in, in a study. Like, what am I looking for? So if I nail it down to a dining room chair, I now walk past a ton of stuff 
over to the dining room section and I know that I'm looking for a dining room chair, I have narrowed it down. That would be the equivalent of our specific learner outcome in kindergarten, quantities to 10. So I've narrowed it down, whatever the big idea was in this case, because you're doing quantities to 10, I can tell you that in your organizing idea, the big rock sitting up there is quantity. That's the word you see. I'm unpacking quantity all the way down. So the lens and glasses I put on are going to determine what I'm seeing. And I, we should all be seeing the same thing. We don't have to all see it at the same time, but we should all see the same thing. So I want you to look at this particular outcome. I'm staying with the same one that we had. This is your 1.1, children investigate quantity to 10. So there's my, there's my first um, concept. I mean, I, if I was looking for concepts, I see it in my learner outcome, which matches my organizing idea. That's a concept. In this case, it's a concept of content. It's content in my learner outcome. What's the content? Quantity. I have to figure out to teach them how to what quantity is. What I'd like you to do is read through the knowledge, understanding, skills, and process. This is just your first row of cusps. That's all I, I took it from. And I want you to, you can just jot it down on paper. You're not going to put it in chat boxes or talk about it. Just what are the what are the concepts of content that you see in those three boxes? Just write the words down. So if you kind of think about what we talked about, it abounds an easy way to, to remember it. So I've highlighted for you the concepts of content. So now you can kind of compare it to the words that you were thinking or that you wrote down. And I see that really they do connect all the way to quantity. And if I had the organizing idea at the top, I'd see quantity there as well. So quantity, objects, pictures, words, numbers, quantity, objects, numbers, sets, all of these are related to quantity. Now I want you to take those glasses off and I want you just to keep looking at what you see now and tell me what are the concepts of skill? What are the words that recognize the concepts of skill? So again, I've got them highlighted. There is one tucked away up here too. Investigate is a skill concept. So is recognize, represent, relate, represented, but I'll, I'll count it in there. So remember really early on when we first started this whole um, group together, we said, don't fall into the trap of reading the knowledge side and using it as a checklist, like done, 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 and then go over to skills and process and go, yep, yep, yep. We have to be able to marry those together. And so in marrying them together, that's what I'm gonna to use to report. Now, these words aren't just for you, the teacher. These words are for the student as well, including kindergarten. We need to teach a kindergarten student, what does it mean to represent? And when I'm going to do the word represent with them, I would be well advised to not do it in a math concept at the same time. Like teach me what it means to represent something first, just like I taught you or re reminded you, we, we reviewed what is a concept. I didn't use math. I used a chair. I used something that's easy for them to see. They know they've done it a hundred times. So how do I represent um, a good meal? You might say, let's open up our lunch kits. Let's open up our lunch bags and let's examine what's inside our lunch kits, right? Or if I'm going to identify healthy foods, 
So I can do it tangibly because I know it. I know it's in my lunch kit or I don't know, but mom put it in there. I can do that physically, right? Use things that they can understand right there and then because they've already done it. Then I can teach you what represent means, come back to the map. And now we're going to say, do you remember when we said represent means that we showed everything that we had or we showed it in different ways? So now we're going to show numbers using objects. So we're going to use our bears. We're going to use our money. We're going to use our counter, like whatever. So I now have a context for this. They are going to be doing the same thing in grade one, in grade two, in grade three, in grade four, at least all the way up. But every year it becomes more difficult in the sense that there's a new concept attached to it, right? It's, it's a higher level thinking. What you do in kindergarten in the perfect world, let's assume that the grade ones this year already went through kindergarten, then they've already gone through these words with you. The grade one teacher would just be reiterating it in terms of a grade one outcome. But because that's not the case, the grade one teachers are also being given a list of the ones that the kindergarten teachers have. A lot of them are repetition, but there are new ones in grade one. So I'm strongly suggesting to grade one teachers, have a look at what would have been talked about in kindergarten already. So what I did for you is I looked at September to December, because although we're gonna meet again before December, like it's right at the beginning of December, so I didn't wanna leave it too close. I went through and I, I brought out all of your skill concepts between September and December, according to our year at a glance. Now, if you're not following the year at a glance, then this might be a little out of sync with you, but right now this is kind of where we're at. So what I did is I brought the word forward. This is not the only time it gets used. Sometimes you've got it used multiple times, but I used exactly the, the wording that is found in your document where that word appears. So for example, recognize a number of familiar objects as a quantity. Okay, that's one of the skill concepts. There's your quantity of content. There's your concept of content, right? There's your other one that you're looking at for a concept and content. So this is when I say marry them together. This is what it looks like when you put both the skill and the statement of content together. How might I use these? If we were to look at what I've just, I just did a couple of them for you. Um, represent a quantity in different ways. So let's say right now, and, and for those of you who are in early, you kind of said where you were at. We're working for mastery. We're always working at mastery. But children come at different places. Some children are going to be at three, some might be at five, some of your kids might be at 10 already, like really have a good understanding of 10. So I can't stop and wait for a child who's only at one or two and everybody else is at three, four or five. I, you can't stop the whole curriculum and wait for them to get caught up. I'm going to test, I'm going to do all of the outcomes, but if Monique is at two and Ashley is at four, and Carol is actually working at eight already. Everything we do is at the number that you're at. I'm still assessing you on your ability to count by once. I'm still assessing you on your ability to show me the objects in the number that you can go to. So that when I report, I can say so-and-so is able to represent quantities to throw the number in, three, two, one, whatever, eight, in different ways. Okay, these are not un uncommon to the kinds of things that we've done in the past, but how do I, how do I get around just having a single learner outcome? Because if you're going to use a rubric and you say students are meeting or not meeting, they're not meeting anything. If that's the only thing I'm going to report in the report card, they're not meeting on anything until June, because really that's our target. So how do I just report to parents and primary teachers do this better than anybody does? You generally write comments and you write a paragraph or a, almost, an, I would say more than a paragraph, usually a story on each child. This is a way for you to also keep a record to show how students have progressed over time. So a lot of the school boards are using this kind of an idea now as an interim. I don't know where all of you are at for reporting. Some of them are only using these statements at parent-teacher interviews. There's no report cards, not until the end of the year. Um, some of them are only doing two report cards. So it depends on where you're at and what your, your board is doing. But this would be one way that you can show progress over time. You've differentiated because every child will be at a different place. In the end, we want them all to be at 10. 
but they may not get there all at the same time. So this is a way that I still meet every outcome and I report on it in an appropriate way. Could I group some of these together? Yes. But the purpose behind this is that we're also teaching them the words that are in bold. I need to teach that to them so they know what it means to identify. What does it mean to create? So that by the time after Christmas comes, you're not explaining the word identify from the beginning every time. I should have done this. I was at three. Now I'm at five. I've identified. I've represented. I've created because I was at three and I did it there. Now I'm doing it at five. And then I'm going to be doing it at seven. And then I'm going to be doing it at eight and, and so on. Just the repetition of it alone helps the students understand it. Okay, so here's kind of what we said we would be looking at in our year at a glance. And remember that we're not doing every one of these outcomes in the month that it's listed for mastery, because we're not going to get to 10. We said reasonably, we're going to look at what's listed in the yellow as a goal. Our goal was to get to five for mastery. And we're working on five all the way through. You can see it shows up more than once all the way through to November. We haven't changed the outcomes, same outcome. So you're always just going back and revisiting. You're always going back and checking the concepts. You're always going back to see that I've got them in the right places. Time and calendar were the kinds of things that you said, just leave it all year because we do that at carpet time. And we would do that in the mornings anyway. So it's just part of the daily routine from day one. And then you also had suggested, or the group had suggested that we would go with geometry, starting with basic identification, especially if it's nice outside. Can we find things that are 2D shapes? Just plain 2D. We're not worried about 3D yet, like leave it. Just start small and you can take every teachable moment to bring it in. I don't have to do it every day, but I can bring in 2D shapes. I can find them in the classroom. I can go outside. I can go to the monkey bars. I can go outside in the playground area. I can go and see if there's hopscotch. Like what are the 2D shapes that we can find readily available that we can talk about? How many of those 2D shapes could we count the sides, right? To get us to the count of mastery of five. How can they recreate what we saw outside? Can they redraw it for us and represent the four or five or whatever you showed them? So lots of ways that I can make it engaging and interactive for them, but I'm still meeting all my outcomes. Okay, when we get into December, the suggestion was they may not yet have mastered five. Maybe they have. And remember, these are suggestions that if you were in November next month and you've got a whole bunch of kids that are way beyond five, perfect. These were suggestions only targets, but they're not, that's not where you park. You don't have to stop there. So in by December, we were suggesting that you would maybe make sure that you could try to get them to six. And I would say to you, even if they're not mastering five yet, we could still do six because that I can play dice game with them. And even if they have to count each dot on the dice, that's okay. They'll count six over and over again. And eventually they'll remember what six looks like. That's subitizing, right? So that's building on that skill already. Counting the one-to-one -one correspondence, count the dots. All of that still meets the outcomes that you, you have in your curriculum. So that gives us some flexibility to do different kinds of investigations with them and different kinds of activities. When we're looking over here at uh, patterning, I could do patterns again. I could be doing money with this, right? I could have money and set up, uh, even if they don't know the names of the, the coins, that's okay. I could put a toonie, a loonie, and a, and a dime. And could they recreate that just by looking at what is the, the shape and what's similar and what does it look like? And I'm gonna get the same coin. I will learn the names of the coins because I have to learn them in kindergarten. I have to find the attributes of them but I'm gonna use them for counters if I don't know the names. I just came, just before I came for this session, I was with grade ones all afternoon. It was the first day that they had seen money. And so that's exactly what we did. We dumped it. I said, can you just organize it and clean it up so it's easier for you and me to see what's on in front of you. And everybody had a different bag. And so that's what they did. Did all of them know the names of the coins? Not at all. So where did we start? I said, can you show me 10 of the same coin? Show me 10. I don't care which one you pick, just show me 10. What was I checking for? Well, first of all, do they know 10? There were two that the teacher had said were not at 10 yet, uh, the rest were. And so well, they found 10 of the same thing. And what happened was, and this is a great way to, to find out if your kids know three or five, whatever number you're working on. They had different coins in their bags. Some of them would take all the nickels. And then one little guy said, 
I don't have Tim. I said, well, then you need to find something else of, of a coin that has 10 in it. So he had to go back and recount again. Again, that's a great formative for me as a teacher to know where they're at. So we unpacked a lot of things this afternoon. So the assessment piece right now, you need to kind of have a good sense of how am I marrying those concepts of skill with content together? And what is it in my class does it sound like when they have mastery? Like, how do I know that they're, I'm really to put the five stamp on there to say that they're ready to move to six or seven? What does mastery look like? And it's not just a one-off where I get it once for you. It's got to be consistent before I can say you've got it, right? That's the piece that we're looking for is that consistent um, response. Now, just very quickly going back again, when we are looking at our year at a glance, you have the learner outcome. And remember that the point two, point one, that just tells you that there's one row, two rows of understandings. The bullets in here are the understandings because the, the wording of the outcome never changes. It always says quantity to 10, always. What's underneath it is the different row of understandings. So the bullets here were the understandings, but that doesn't unpack for me the spe specificity of the knowledge and the skills and procedures. So you still have to come to this document, look up your 1.1 and know that it says objects, pictures, words, numbers. Okay, that's the example that we did in our, um, in our session today to find the concepts. So I still need to have this document so I can see what am I putting together with what? How am I, how am I having to write those sentences? When you look at 1.2a, remember that kindergarten and grade three were the only exceptions to the rule where there was actually an a behind a number. In your second row of, un, of uh, understandings, you had all of these show up as an understanding. And most teachers said, I, there's no way I would do all five of those right off the bat. So most of them said, I would start with A. And that's fine. So we put A here. The B, C, D comes later. But a lot of teachers have already grabbed from B, C, D, or E because it's fit into how they've laid out their, their counting. So you're not stuck at 2A. If you have grabbed some of these, by all means, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. So here's your 1.4. So again, there's your language of more or less. That's that comparative one. So even today, not knowing any of the coins, I had them count to 10. Can I said, can you compare the one that has a bear to the one that has a ship on it? Like we didn't even get into the specifics of it, but I just said, can you compare them? And I said, can you tell me about the size? Which is larger, which is smaller, right? I can use coins to do all of that work. Um, when you wanna talk about length, right? I can do measurement with money. I can say, once I know the names of them, what if you put five quarters and five dimes side by side, which one do you think would be longer, right? Now they have to think about what's the size of the coin and they should be able to guess first, give me an educated guess and then test it. Put five quarters and five dimes down, which is longer? Oh, cause the quarters are bigger five of those are going to make the difference, right? Um, you had geometry, which they were talking about different shapes. Those are coming up in December. So circles, triangles, cubes, and cylinders. Do I need all of those right off the bat? No, not at all. You just introduction. You probably grab them even when you're outside, maybe doing a walk on patterns, you saw circles. Um, so we're gonna look at that. When we have our coins out, they're circles, right? We wanna talk about those things and integrate them right off the bat. Child can, can identify circles consistently all the time, right? And then again, we have the one on patterning, which a lot of you said you've already started. So money is a driver right now. Money should be the number one manipulative in front of the kids. It should be the first thing that they're seeing all the time when we're counting, when we're grouping, when we're doing anything that you're doing. Colors, you wanna sort colors. You want to, they don't have to know the names of them. They don't have to know the value of them. Today, I asked students to tell me, can you tell me, do you know, anybody know the names of any of these? There were two children out of 13 that could tell me the names of the coins. The rest of them had no idea. They're all grade ones. So kindergarten students aren't going to be any further ahead. In fact, they're going to be probably behind. So we have to start from square one with kindergarten students and grade one at the same time. So those of you teaching a K-1-2 split or K-1 split right now, this is a perfect year for it. Everything that you see highlighted in yellow here, money could be your driver. 
This is where money could absolutely meet all of your outcomes. You could use money only. I'm not saying only use money, but if we want them to learn it and we want them to get really familiar with it, the more you bring it out as a counter, as a use to, for patterns, to group, to make arrays, to make um, subitizing little groups in, use it. Use it. They don't have to know the names of them. They'll come. And when it comes and you can just have stop saying things like, find things that look the same. Now we can name it. Find five dimes, right? Now I can say use it. So there was a video that we did in August when we first met the first time, August 22nd. There was a video that we talked a little bit more about money and how we might integrate those. You might want to go back and have a look at that in the folder if you haven't already seen that. But typically, if I just dumped a bunch of things, there'll be pennies all over, right? And the pennies are still in there as well. We're leveraging those to count. Not only that, we're using them for place value. And if children say, but we don't have a penny anymore, you're right. We don't have it in our pocket, but we absolutely have a penny in this world. There is nothing that you can't buy today that is not calculated to the cent. It's not calculated to a zero and five. So you'll go into a store and see $21.98, 1999, 997. Like you see all that, it's already there. We don't, we never drop the penny from calculation. We just don't have it in our pocket because it weighed too much and it was worth nothing. So when they just dump it and they organize it, you might see something like this. And that's what I saw today. And if they didn't know the name, I said, could you find me three of something that looks the same? Right, so that's a starting point. In kindergarten, our counters is what our money can be. It can just be a counter. And then as they know the names of the coins and the bills, they have to know the names of them, but they also have to know what are some attributes of them. Um, that's what we did today. We said, let's look at each of the circles. What do you see on some of those circles? I see a beaver. Okay, let's talk about beavers. We talked about beavers. So we put it on a beaver. Does anybody know what the beaver, what the what the the circle with the beaver is? It's a nickel. And I asked them, how do you know that? Well, I have them in my piggy bank. So some kids had a piggy bank, right? They have it, some knowledge of it, but not every child will. So we start from scratch. So I can talk about the shapes of them. I can notice that the loony actually isn't completely round. It has kind of straight sides on it, especially in the play money. So we might talk about that. The color. Some are gold, some are silver and gold, some are brown, right? The pennies are brown. Then the bills, what are the color of the bills? How do I know what, what bill is from what bill? I can see numbers on them, right? So again, the numbers might be over their heads. Maybe you don't do the bills right away. If you haven't done money, just do the coins and then we'll bring the bills in later. Today, even the kids being the first time seeing them, by the time we left after an hour, I had them close their eyes. I said, if I reached in my pocket and I went for something that was green, what would I grab? They said, $20. I said, if it was blue, what would I grab? And some kids, they guessed, right? But that's the kind of thing we want to do, just the attribute connections. Oh, remember the money app? Um, I did share that with you in August, but if you are new to the group, you might not have had it. This is another way for you to get legitimate looking money that they could drag out onto your uh, smart board or your whiteboard. I'll put it into the chat box if you haven't got it loaded on your computer. So the link is in the chat box right now. Uh, there we go. Uh, but what this does is it also lets me see, can you count? Can you find me five of a coin? If I don't know the names, but find me five of something. So now they just get to drag out five of whatever they picked. Now I know I can count to five. Later on, I might say, can you find me five loonies? So now I'm checking for five, but I'm checking for the number and the name of the coin that I'm looking for. So I can parallel the financial literacy piece and money with counting and my outcomes all at the same time, everything in one piece. There are some in this slide deck, I'll share this, I'll put them in the folder for you. But when you go out of the presentation mode, this is iterative, meaning that you can put numbers up here and depend, just tailor it to the students. You can go in and edit, you can put an eight here or seven here or 10 here or whatever they're at. And then you can say, can you drag the number of coins to the number, right? And if they already know it's called a penny, then say, can you put the right number of pennies by the number that's showing? And you don't have to have all the numbers up there, just put sporadic ones, right? Just give them some activity. Or I just wanna know, do you know how to count? And do you know the names of the coins? 
So I put three coins up here, you could change it, but these are iterative as well. So I could say, can you show me three pennies and two nickels? So now I, they have to know which is the penny to show me three. They have to know which is the nickel to grab two. And you might wanna put the dime in there too. You might wanna do sort of a, a part part hole. And it's not too early to do that right at the beginning. A part part hole lets me start thinking in terms of addition and we're not doing addition per se until well after Christmas. But when I drag, put a penny, let's say I put a penny in here and I put two in here. I might say to them, how many do you think between these two, how many do you think we would put up here? And they may just drag them up to show that there's three. And I'd say, okay, so now can you show me those three, but put those back down again, right? We're, we're getting them into the notion of, of addition without talking about addition. And we're still just talking about quantity. It's all we're doing. You tool that up to whatever level they're at. I put a large template in here for you, the part, part, whole template, if you don't have those already. But I made it large enough when you download it that you could use that for Cuisinaire rods too. But you can put money on here and they can spread it out, right? They can move it around. They're not restricted by size. You also have the bingo game. If I'm just learning the names of my coins, then let's play bingo. There are 25 unique bingo cards. You don't have to create different combinations. They're already done. You can download them, have a bingo game with them. You could play Go Fish. I gave you these cards in there too, where you can cut them up and then teach them how to play Go Fish, where you deal out all the three cards to everybody who's in the game, three game kids to a game or whatever you wanna do. And then they get to decide who they wanna ask. So I might say, Monique, do you have a toonie? And if she says, I don't have a toonie in my hand, I have to draw from the pile. And if I happen to draw another toonie, I get to put my pair down. So you're always trying to get as many pairs. It's an easy one, fun game, but at least they get to learn the coin names at the same time. Show me the money. Maybe I wanna put four. Okay, I, I can only go to four right now. So I'm gonna put four in the middle. We ran these off on cardstock and I just laminated them so that it was just a board that we could use over and over again. And that way too, if you wanna give them a dry erase marker, they could draw you pictures, then we could do that. So I give them a number in the center and I ask them to show me that number four different ways. So they could show me four coins, I could say you could show me four of the same coin. You could show me four dots. You can show me the subitizing four fingers. You could, whatever. They can show you anything that resembles four in four different ways. This is a template that we have uh, available. There's lots of them, but this is one, it's used for addition. You're not gonna do that. But what you could do is simply put a number at the bottom of each coin and say, show me, three of these, five of these, eight of those, if that's where you are. And they could put them into their box on their template and you can just walk around quickly and see what they are. Remember that these templates are found on the Moving Forward site. So I just wanna take you there to make sure that everybody can get into that site. It has changed significantly since we met last time. So I wanna make sure that you're all able to understand where you find your materials. So you were all given a login and password initially when you registered, you got a confirmation of registration and you got a welcome to the Moving Forward site, which had your login and your password. If you don't remember seeing that, it might be in your junk mail because some boards, for some reason, it went there. If you're not sure, all you have to do into your email search bar is just type in Moving Forward Curriculum, just all one word, Moving Forward Curriculum, and it should bring up that email that you got. And if you can't find it, I'll show you how to get around that too. All right, so just very quickly, I wanna show, show you so that you know where to find things. So you are uh, working as a cohort group right now in math. So when you go into cohort math, these are the things that are coming up right now. And we are working in the kindergarten group. So when I come up here and I click it on, Anything that we have done so far will be there. And Jordan went in this morning and put in our file. So I'm gonna show you. So for those of you who just joined us, you should go back and watch session one if you haven't already done that. And any templates, anything I share with you will always be specific to that month. But that doesn't mean you don't go back in there and grab things. I'm not gonna repeat things. So if I shared with you, for example, the part, part, whole template this month, I'm not gonna carry it forward again. 
you might need it again, but I'm not gonna keep repeating it. So you always have to go back in. So if you go to session two right now that we're in, a copy of the slide deck that I'm giving you right now is already in there. So any links that are in there, you still have activity, you can get in there. Any assessment documents that I have right now that may be helpful to you, I've also put in there. And you don't have to use those right away. They may be later, maybe you're not doing them till November, December. Um, First Nations, we'll talk about that in just a second. And then general resources are usually where I put things like templates, part, part, whole, show me the money, that template, right? That's where I'll put things. I won't always put everything that's in the slide deck. There's usually more in your drop down menu here than what I will put in this slide deck just because we don't have time to go through everything. So if I find things that I know would be helpful to you based on kind of where we're at in our year to glance, I will put them in there. If any of you need any resources between this meeting, let's say in the next one, or you're saying, I don't have anything to unpack this idea that I have, just email me, give me more than five minutes notice, that would be helpful, but just email me. And if I have resources, I'll send them to you. And then if I send them to one of you, I will also put it in here so that you all have access to it at some point, because you might need it later on. Okay, so that's how you'll find your material. So it's always in cohort group in math and it's locked down to this group specifically, right? This is not open to the public. Neither are school divisions. You can't get into the school division ones. Those are locked down to those school divisions. What is open to the public sits right in here, additional provincial resources, and this continues to grow. So numeracy interventions probably isn't going to affect you guys right now. Um, we're gonna go back and visit those after Christmas. I'll show you how you might use some of those. The interactive documents, I'm gonna to go to the year to year plans. Teachers asked us, is Alberta education going to give us illustrative examples like we had before? And the answer from them was no, they're not. So in an attempt to try and sort of help out with that a little bit, what we did is we took your year plan that we have right now and we made it interactive. So anything that's highlighted in green and it's only on this site, like you can't download this one because of the interactivity, but you can go in and out all you want. You will find anything that's highlighted in green will automatically take you to an example, another lesson plan, sometimes pictures that you can share with the kids. So it just helps out if you're looking for some extra info. The other thing that you'll find on this site is there's a parent resource. So if you were looking for a way to explain to parents sort of in a more general nutshell what's happening in kindergarten math, just click on the math one. There's one for LA there too, if you wanna use that. Um, just click it on and it'll just give you sort of that information, all right? When I go into um, math kits, some people were asking for math kits. So the math kit for kindergarten is just what are the resources that are probably most helpful in kindergarten? You don't have to make a kit completely optional, but it's just for those who wanted it or just even want to see what's in it. There is a video that tells you, explains to you everything that's in the kit. There's the slide deck if you just want to focus on one particular part. And then anything that was in the kit that needed to be copied you have access to below. So if you don't even want to build the kit, but there's some things that you saw there that you wanted, just use it. If you don't want to use it, that's fine too. There's no obligation to create a kit. And then what we are going to be posting here probably next week is up at the top here where you're seeing all these ones in the black, there'll be a new one called French, French resources. So everything that I'm doing right now, like this session right now, will all be translated into French. So we're translating all the math and all the science into French so that our French immersion teachers have access to something as well, because right now they're kind of bound to going to English and not having any options to go. So everything will be translated. So if you have French immersion in your school, you might want to let teachers know that they'll be able to access those. Those are without copy, like without um, a sign in. They'll be able to do that through the public bar at the top. Okay, so that's how you find this. If you go into any one of those and it says you do not have access rights, what it's asking you for is put your email address in there. Type it in if you haven't been able to get in. And if you forgot your password or you don't think you have one, then just click on forgot password and it will come to us. And what we'll do is reissue your information. So if you're having troubles logging in, that's one way to get around it. You should be working with number lines at this point too. Even though they might be counting to three, they should already see the numbers on a number line. And, and you can even put pennies. 
to count on the number line, right? Or coins to count to three or five or seven or wherever they're at. And then lastly, we have some information on symbols. This is uh, First Nations information. What's in yellow is interactive for you. It's more for the teacher if you, if you don't have a background in that. But I'm giving you shapes that you're studying. So if I'm going to talk about circles, why don't we bring in First Nations discussion about drums? Drums are in the shape of a circle. What do I know about drums, right? So like my conversation today with beavers, we talked about what is a beaver? What do they do? What do they eat? Blah, blah, blah. Same thing with syllabics not expecting children to learn Cree syllabics, but what I want them to see is the symbols, the shapes, the triangles that exist in syllabics so that they see shapes exist outside of just drawing a shape. They are in all different aspects. In grade one, we talk about halves. In grade two, we talk about halves and quarters, not one over two, we talk about the word. So here I see a circle. And for children, um, different parts of the year, these are your four seasons. We talk about seasons, right? So there's lots of ways to link your shapes into bringing in Indigenous culture. Patterning, right? I can use some pictures for patterns. Stories, like Leah Dorian is a, a great writer, First Nations writer, but she writes tons of math ones. They're mathology books. Um, we can look at Mother Earth. We hear that often. It's always done with a circle, right? So there's stories behind that that we can talk about or a teepee, teepee appears to be a triangle and in actual fact has a circle at the bottom. So we don't worry about that it's 3D. We're just, what is the shape that you see? What are the patterns that you're seeing? You know, how do the patterns repeat? How can they identify them? So I can tie all my math outcomes in and bring in First Nations right off the bat. This is one of the books that you'll find on your site, We Can Beat, and that's a great one. It counts to 10. Um, you could even do the, the work that goes along with that. Um, at the pond, I'm just trying to show books that might be in your school or maybe you haven't linked them to this new curriculum yet. At the pond, in the garden, these were put out by Nelson. They came with lesson plans. They're math readers. They're great little books as well. They're completely um, encompassing as far as lessons are concerned. If you have Origo resources in your school, you might have the book Muddy Muddy Mess. That's a great big book um, for a book talk but it's about 2D and 3D shapes. That'd be a great time to bring that one out. If you are looking for other things, we're going to build on Cuisinaire rods in our next session. I put them here if you're ready for them, but I'm suggesting that maybe if you haven't done tons of work with money, hold off on this because we will come back to this in November and spend some time looking at those as well. But I did include resources for you for those who are, are wanting to do something like that. The activities, when you link this on, are all kindergarten related activities that deal with Cuisinaire rods. But again, you don't have to feel obliged to get there because we will cover some of that in November again. Okay, so we ran over a little bit, we started a little bit late. So here's kind of our nutshell that we have for this month. You're continuing to master the yellow numbers, your mastery for five. Your goal already is thinking about six for December, but it doesn't have to be mastery for six. Mastery for five is kind of where we want to go. So when we come back after Christmas, we want to start thinking about really getting into 10 in a big way and making it look very, very manageable for them. Okay, are there any questions? Is there a kindergarten science cohort? Yes, there is. There absolutely is. So that has been closed. It closed this week. But if it's something that you want to get into and you didn't, just send me an email and I will, can get you registered because we're about to start session two with science, but you're more than welcome to join us for sure. Hey, are there any questions? Is there anybody that ran into trouble getting into any sites or not sure about the Learn Alberta or Learn about the uh, Moving Forward site? I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm going to stop uh, recording here.